seven ways how not to die in your RV. Stand by, I'm gonna tell you all seven because I don't want any of them to happen to you. Hey there, welcome back, Dr. Dave. I am the RV Dummy. How are you doing? I've got a great, great show for you today. I'm gonna to share with you seven ways how you should not die in your RV, and I want you to listen to all seven of them very carefully, especially, especially number seven, because I don't want to see this happen to you. These are all preventable, preventable, pre prevent, preventable. I think that's a word. Preventable. Maybe it's a word. Maybe it's not. I'm not sure. But before I get into them, real quickly, thank you so much for being with me on my channel, the RV Dummy. I am the RV dummy because I've only been RVing for about two years now and there's a lot I don't know, but there's a lot I have learned over two years and I'm very, very happy to impart my knowledge to those of you that want to become better RV or RVers, have more fun RVing and join our little community around the RV dummy. Uh, by the way, Yoko and I are, and Boo Boo are going to be traveling pretty soon down to Florida, doing a trip all around the whole state of Florida in our RV. Uh, we're going to even make go a little bit further west into the Panhandle and into uh, maybe even New Orleans a little bit. So if we're on the same route, if we can catch up with each other, we'd love to meet you. A few of you have already messaged me and said, hey, let's meet up for some coffee or for some something, 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 a hug, or whatever it might be. So we hope to be able to see you on that Florida trip coming up very, very soon. Stand by for more information on that. Let's right now get into seven ways how not to die in your RV. Not in any special order. Let's go right into number one. Number one is I want you to drive conservatively and don't push it. Stay in the right lane when you can. Go with the flow of the traffic in the right lane. Don't be weaving in and out. Don't be going over the speed limit. Don't be doing things that are stupid. And when I say don't push it, I mean don't feel like you've got to drive 10, 11, 12 hours in a day. That's just ridiculous. You know, have fun. I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in driving a very short amount of time for the, when we're on the road, when we're actually on the road and not camped drive a short amount of time, having fun, looking around, smelling the coffee, enjoying it. Don't push it. Don't push it. Don't push it, please. Some of you are not going to listen to me and you're going to push, 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 and you're getting, going to get into trouble. Okay, please listen to me. Number two, I'm looking down at my notes here. Um, number two, avoid bad weather situations. It's okay when it's really bad, when it's like, let's say, super windy, snowy, icy, heavy rain, whatever the weather situation might be that's not ideal for driving, pull over, don't push again, just relax. If you need to boondock somewhere, stay in a Walmart parking lot, even if it means if the weather is severe, you can't plug in, if, if it means you're grabbing a hotel room for the night. I have been known to do that. It's, it's just safer. I want to share with you something. I think I talked about this on a, on, a, uh, on a past episode, but this past winter, Yoko and I were driving from, along Interstate 80 from the, uh, basically from the East Coast to the West, and we got through a part of, I think it was Nebraska, and it was super windy and cold and snow was blowing, and I saw at least two RVs. These were... Um, from what I can remember, they were, I want to say, I want to say one was a class C, a large class C, and I want to say the other was a, like a fifth wheel or some type of trailer. Um, blown off the road, over, I can't even imagine, I mean, I, I, I pray that the driver and passengers were not injured, but the, 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 the rigs themselves look like just a, a, a crumpled mess. It's not worth it. When the weather gets bad, pull over, stop driving, relax. You know, RVing is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be something that's like life-threatening or risky. We're supposed to be having fun RVing. Pull over. Don't risk it. Number three, 
it goes without saying, I know you're all doing this, make sure your carbon monoxide and smoke detectors are working, they're on, they're functional, and I mean, God forbid you have some kind of problem when you're sleeping at night and you're leaking carbon monoxide somewhere. You want to be alerted. You know, too many people have died in their RVs because they do not have a functional carbon monoxide detector. And as you know, carbon monoxide is odorless, colorless, odorless, colorless, and everything less. You can't, you don't know it's there. So please be very careful. Make sure these things are working. Fresh batteries. Make sure they're hooked up, and make sure you know they're they're detecting what they're supposed to detect. Number four. Make sure your tires are in good condition. I always err on the side of having newer tires than older tires. I know I, I love it when you go into the shop and say, "Oh, these are okay. It looks like you can get it. You probably get another three thousand miles out of these." Well, why take a chance? Why take a chance on tread that's like at the end of its life? I would much prefer to spend the money, have a good, fresh, new set of tires that I can count on that are not going to blow out. Well, you know, you can never control a blowout 100%, but chances are if you've got a nice, fresh set of tires or tires that are not overworked, um, you're going to be better off. And also make sure your tires are inflated properly. Check them all the time. If you have tire pressure monitoring system, that's even better. I don't really have one on my rig. As you know, I've got a class B. It's pretty easy for me. I don't have, I don't have dualies or anything. It's pretty easy for me to check my pressure, which I do all the time. I carry a, one of those portable um, tire inflators in my rig. And God forbid, if I, if I need to put some air in the tire, I can do it from anywhere. I can do it anywhere. So very, very important. I don't want to see you having a blowout and all of a sudden your rig is out of control and you're swerving and you're crashing into everything. No, no, this can be totally prevented. I don't want to see you die that way. Okay, let's see. Number, where are we? That was number four. Number five, turn off your propane tank when you're fueling up. Again, it's just, it's just not worth, I know a lot of us don't, but it's not worth taking a chance of having a spark from somewhere, igniting something, and the whole thing, everything, just the gasoline, the propane, everything just goes up in flames like a big bomb. It's just, it's not worth it. Be safe. Turn your propane tank off when you're fueling. And also when you're going through certain situations like tunnels that either uh, say turn it off or if you don't allow them, make, make sure you follow the rules with your propane. There's, there's reasons they have these rules. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Make sure you follow the rules. There are reasons that they have these rules. The, basically, the reasons are to save lives. Number six. Try not to get into any kind of shady, sketchy situations at campgrounds, BL, um, BLM land situations, uh, Walmarts, Cabela's, wherever you might be. Look around you. See what's around you. If there's anything that looks a little bit sketchy or shady, move on. There are some weirdos that do hang around campgrounds sometimes or hang around the um, BLM land or even Walmart parking lots and truck stops. There are, um, I, I just, I just read something on the, um, something a truck stop. It seems like it's very common to have, uh, what do they call They call them lot lizards. If you're not sure what a lot lizard is, Google that. You, you just want to stay away from weird situations. And I'm also going to take it one step further. I'm going to recommend that you, um, carry some type of protection. The one thing I like about my class B and also class C's is that if you're in a weird situation and, and you can just get into the driver's seat and pretty much drive away. If you're towing something uh, and you're in, you're, you know, you're back in your rig and, and you know, you're being towed by a pickup truck, it's, it's a little bit more difficult if it's a really sketchy situation to get out, get back in. And so um, that's why I prefer, I prefer, I love our class B. And class A's kind of, I'm, I'm sorry, class C's kind of the same. Class A's, oh, they're just, they're just, a lot of people love them. A lot of people love them. They're just too big for me, but I'm not 
dissing anybody with a class A. I know a lot of people totally, totally love it. But carry protection with you. I'm not going to go into what kind of protection I carry in my rig. It's, I, don't want to, I don't want to talk about that. I don't want that to get out at all. Let's just say, let's just say that if somebody somewhere tries to mess with me, I'm ready. It's like the last line of defense. I don't want to ever have to use anything that would hurt somebody else. But if it's my life or their life or my life or my wife's life or even my cat's life, um, I'll be prepared to do whatever I have to do. And you want to do the same thing. I'm not, again, whatever that protection might be, just be prepared in case you get into the worst situation possible, which we hope, we hope you never do. Last but not was that Yoko in the background? Yoko, can you say a quick hi? People are asking about you. There's Yoko. People are asking about you and they're saying, Where, when's Yoko coming back on your videos? Well, there she is. But we'll, when we're traveling, she's going to have a lot more time to be on the videos, talking, sharing her knowledge. Right now, she's dancing around, having fun, doing something. But Yoko made an appearance finally on a video. Um, number seven. Something that probably a lot of us don't even think about as often as we should, especially when we're RVing and having all this fun. I want to see you make sure you get your regular medical checkups. And if you have some type of medical issue, problem, whatever it might be, make sure you're being followed up. Make sure you're taking medication if you need to. And make sure you're staying as healthy as you possibly can. The last thing I want to see happen, for, I don't want to see you have any kind of medical problem at all, but the last thing I want to see happen is you're driving along the road in, one of the, in a tremendous rig, and God forbid you have like a heart attack or a stroke or some, something else that happens that you totally lose control of your vehicle and you end up in really, really, really bad shape along with the other people or pets or whatever in your rig. I, I don't want to ever see that happen to you, so make sure you're doing everything you can to stay healthy, which means eating the right foods, getting exercise, um, hydrating, drinking water, making sure you're getting all of your nutrients. I personally believe in eating as much whole food as possible. Um, we don't eat any, Yoko and I do not eat any meat. We don't eat any dairy. We don't eat anything that comes from animals. The only exception we will make sometimes is we will eat some fish. But um, absolutely no meat, no chicken, no dairy. I'm not saying you have to do that. But whatever it takes for you to stay as healthy as possible, do it. Exercise often. And also see your doctor on a regular basis and get your blood work done. Get your EKG. Get your heart checked. Get everything checked out. Because if you've got your blood pressure, if you've got something going on, you want to know about it. And a lot of these things are just kind of hiding if high blood pressure. A lot of times we don't know we have high blood pressure until it's actually monitored because it doesn't really hurt. You don't feel it until it's maybe too late and it's already causing heart damage or, or the uh, possibility of a stroke or something like that. So make sure you get checked out. This is perhaps the most important number seven, the most important one. I don't want to see you go that way in your RV. Those are my seven ways how not to die in your RV. And they're also pretty good for life in general as well. Hope you liked it. If you have any more, if you have 8, 9, 10, 11, you want to share with me, I'll be do so in the comments. If I get enough of them, we could do another episode, something like seven more ways how not to die in an RV. But until next time, I'm Dr. Dave. I'm the RV Dummy. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe, hit the button, like the video, comment. I love having you as part of my tribe here. As they say in Japanese, part of my nak nakama it means kind of like tribe, group of people that are we're all kind of like uh, doing the same thing together. We're friends and we're, we've got similar beliefs. So um, thanks for being with me. Until next time, Dr. Dave, the RV Dummy. See you later.